35 times a year, a highly trained military pilot fights for survival and loses. the edge of a quiet lake in Southern California comes a man directly involved in that fatal crash. In a few days, a rocket charge will propel him into the air over this same lake in a final test for America's only operational zero-zero escape system. This photographic record shows the earlier testing of a Weber 00 ejection package. 43 consecutive successful tests were made using instrumented dummies. But mannequins don't fly airplanes. Men do. Now in the projection room at Weber Aircraft, the transition from test dummy to human subject begins. Company President Fred Godfrey introduces Jim Hall, professional parachute safety instructor. Hall will ride the zero zero ejection package as part of Weber's own company funded engineering test program. The system is already operational in the F-106, but Weber feels that to be fully man rated, a final test must be made with a live human being. Jim Hall begins his concentrated indoctrination. He must learn every phase of the zero zero system and he will be tested, measured and probed. Project engineer Wally Ziegler explains to him his estimated trajectory and time of descent under open canopy. Descent under open canopies is no novelty to Hall. Major Hall, Air Force Reserve. At Edwards Air Force Base, he instructs test pilots in safety and escape procedures and techniques. Procedures developed to protect them in emergencies at any height or airspeed. And Major Hall has no trouble holding their attention. His purpose, after all, is to save lives. One of the most important factors, the Weber 00 seat units, designed to get the pilot clear of the aircraft and safely under full canopy, even during takeoff roll or in a high sink rate condition. Burbank, California. On a sunny Monday morning, a man reports for work at an aircraft factory. A man with a very unordinary job ahead. First, a visit to the seat assembly line. All of these F-106 production seats are identical. But this one will never get near an aircraft. In this seat, Jim Hall will be deliberately fired into the air from ground level. Somehow a nervous smile seems to be the order of the day. Zero-zero experiments in other lands have often resulted in extreme back injuries, no matter how light or small the subject. Yet, in 43 tests, the Weber system has never exerted more than a brief safe 16 Gs upon the dummies. The live subject, Jim Hall, will be x-rayed once again after the test. He and we hope the pictures match. If Jim Hall were an astronaut, his ejection seat would be contoured to the dimensions of his own derriere, but not on this trip. F-106 pilots come in all shapes, sizes, and centers of gravity. And this single Weber seat is designed to function effectively carrying any one of them. Whoever the man, in almost any attitude, the system is sufficiently stable to recover and provide the pilot with a full parachute. A man-seat combination is an odd and irregularly shaped mass. Mathematically, the moment of inertia is almost impossible to determine. 
Weber developed an inertia meter for the Gemini program to do the job quickly and accurately. Now, it will serve Jim Hall. The sum of all that has been learned is carefully plotted. Though the test equipment will be strictly standard, the ejection conditions will reflect Jim Hall's own center of gravity. On this first zero-zero ride, everything will be at optimum. The splashdown area. A body of water some 300 by 600 feet. Selected because of proximity to the plant, to test the survival equipment, and also, water's just a little softer than land. The test platform is located to bring Jim Hall straight down range between the two rescue launches. A time is decided upon, the comparatively windless hours in the middle of the day. As the test approaches, each component of the ejection package undergoes final inspection. These unique mechanisms, the pressure actuator and parachute disconnect, are the heart of the Weber system, devices which actually fire the gun-deployed parachute. The gun-deployed chute has been proved not only in tests with dummies, but with men as well. In this free fall test, four of the parachute's shroud lines have been purposely cut, thus making a steerable canopy out of a standard Air Force chute. In 1962, Jim Hall received the Leo G. Stevens Award for his work in parachute safety. Last year, the award went to Rosie Rosenberg, Weber's veteran parachute rigger. Hall has made 557 jumps, but this time Rosie's expertise will have special meaning because of the comparatively low altitude Hall will make the test without a reserve chute. 